गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स सो टुडे विल स्टार्ट क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी वन प्लीज कम टू क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी वन फॉलोइंग आर द एस्टिमेट्स ऑफ द नेट कैश फ्लो एंड प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ अ न्यू प्रोजेक्ट ऑफ मिसर्स एक्स लिमिटेड ईयर इज गिवन प्रोबेबिलिटी इज गिवन ईयर जीरो वन टू फाइव ईयर फाइव इनिशियल इन्वेस्टमेंट इज गिवन एस्टिमेटेड नेट कैश फ्लो आफ्टर टैक्स इनफ्लोज आर गिवन एस्टिमेटेड सैलवेज वैल्यू आफ्टर टैक्स इज गिवन द रिक्वायर्ड रेट ऑफ रिटर्न ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट इज टेन परसेंट फाइंड आउट सो दीज आर दी क्वेश्चन expected npv of the project best case npv worst case npv the probability of the occurrence of the worst case if the cash flows are perfectly dependent over time and independent over time then standard deviation and coefficient of variation assuming that there are only three streams of cash flows which are represented by each column of the table with the given probabilities last question is coefficient of variation of x limited on its average project which is in the range of 0.952 this end range is not given maybe you can write 1.20 1.20 if the coefficient of variation of the project is found to be less risky than the average 100 basis points are deducted from the company's cost of capital the meaning of this line is that if your coefficient of variation is found to be below this range then the cost of capital which is 10% here will be reduced by 1% so then it will become 9% should the project be accepted by x limited so these are the questions here how do you solve this question first question is expected npv of the project first question is expected npv of the project so how do i compute the expected npv of the project can somebody help me please expected npv of the project we have three possibilities either this combination can realize or this combination can realize or this combination can realize is it right so i am going to first compute three npvs assuming that initial investment will be 4 lakh estimated cash flow after tax will be 1 lakh and salvage value and the same thing we will do here also we will compute three times npv and once we compute three times npv we can multiply by the respective probabilities we can multiply by the respective probabilities and we'll be able to find out the expected npv then the second question is very easy best npv worst npv so we have three npvs with us the lowest one is the worst and the highest npv is the best case and then probability of occurrence of worst case if cash flows are perfectly dependent over time and perfectly independent over time so that i will explain later first let us complete part 1 and part 2 which are very easy this question was asked in may 2010 exam for 12 marks can you believe that so one by one will solve and then i will explain further so please come to step number 1 calculation of npv calculation of npv 
calculation of NPV under that draw this table first first column year second column particulars third column discounting factor at the rate ten percent discounting factor at the rate ten percent then probability column probability column under probability column probability equal to point three two columns cash flow column and discounted cash flow column cash flow column and discounted cash flow column then probability equal to point five cash flow discounted cash flow discounted cash flow means pv of cash inflow pv of cash inflow and probability equal to point two cash flow discounted cash flow so we will get three answers we will get three answers we will get three answers first you write down column number 1 2 3 4 column, column number 5 is 3 into 4 column number 6 7 is 3 into 6 column number 8 9 will be 3 into 8 column number 3 is discounting factor which is common so i am solving one of the very important questions of this chapter okay and they can repeat in the exam also for 10 to 12 marks so please take a calculator pen pencil and write year 0 year 0 initial investment year 0 initial investment year 0 initial investment in first case it will be 4 lakh present value will be 4 lakh second case also second case also 4 lakh initial investment is same 4 lakh rupees each initial investment is same 4 lakh rupees each 1-5 1-5 annual cash flow present value present value is 3.791 present value is 3.791 if first situation arises annual cash flow will be 1 lakh so what you do multiply 1 lakh into 3.791 3 79 100 next in second scenario it is 1 lakh 10000 1 10000 3.791 4 17000 10 4 17000 third scenario 1 20000 1 20000 answer is probability will be 4 lakh 54920 the dcf will be 454920 and fifth year write down salvage value fifth year discounting factor 0.621 0.621 fifth year factor is 0.621 probability 3.3 cash flow 20000 in this scenario salvage value is 20000 multiply please and give me the answer 12420 in scenario 2 when probability is 0.5 cash flow will be 50000 salvage value and multiply please multiply with this factor 31050 third scenario you will get salvage value 60000 multiply by the discounting factor 37260 37260 37260 
now please take tell me the total of this column everybody please try total of dcf column total of dcf column please uh, give me the answer 8480 is 8480 right next answer please 48060 48060 next answer 48060 and the last answer please 92180 92180 these are the three npv possible depending upon scenario 1 scenario 2 or scenario 3 whose probability is 0.3 0.5 and 0.2 now if they ask you what is expected npv of the project this npv multiply by 0.3 probability this npv 0.5 probability this npv 0.2 probability so write down the answer below step 2 you have to write nicely write nicely one day you have to write in the exam also same question then how do you present it calculation of expected npv three columns three columns one column write npv second column probability third column expected npv third column expected npv under that write npv column number 1 probability column number 2 expected npv 3 is equal to 1 into 2 these are my 3 npvs these are my 3 npvs and these are their probabilities please multiply and give me the total multiply and give me the total multiply and give me the total what is the answer now total please total come on what is the total of the last column total of the last column is 39922 39922 this is my first answer expected npv now write down step 3 step 3 in step 3 the question says what is the best case npv and what is the worst case npv so the smallest npv is worst one and the highest npv is the best one so if your luck is bad then you will get this combination the first combination and your npv can be negative 8480 and if your luck is good if your luck is good best case npv you will get and your npv can be 92 180 is it right your npv can be 92 180 this is my second answer first and second answer were very easy third answer third answer the probability of occurrence of worst case what is the probability that you will get negative npv of 8480 if cash flows are perfectly dependent over time and perfectly independent over time you have to answer if cash flows are perfectly dependent over time dependent over time means if cash flow is low in one year it will be low in each year and if this is the meaning of dependent if cash flows are low in one year then in all other year it is bound to be low and independent means each year cash flow is independent each year cash flow is independent of previous year independent of previous year 
now my question is if cash flows are independent in each year so if the probability of getting 8480 negative is 0.3 every year cash flow is independent of the previous year so i'll get 0.83 into 0.83 into 0.3 into 0.3 but if cash flows are dependent means if i get 0.3 in one year first year i am going to get 0.3 in all the years then my subsequent year will be only point subsequent year will be only the lowest uh, combination so therefore in the first case when the cash flows are dependent the moment you find that you have got low cash flow in the first year it is bound to be low in all the other year so probability of getting low cash flow in the first year is 0.3 that will be my dependent answer and for independent each year is independent each year is independent so if each year is independent i will have to apply joint probability concept i have to apply joint probability because what is the possibility of getting low in first year and low in second year and low in third year and low in fourth year and low in the fifth year that is the meaning of finding the probability when cash flows are independent over time so i am going to write this answer nicely for you write down step number 4 probability of worst case npv 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 means what is the probability you'll get negative 84 80 it five eight zero write down nature perfectly dependent over time perfectly dependent over time if it is perfectly dependent over time means if you know first year will be worst it will be worst in all the remaining four year so whatever is the probability of getting worst npv in first year becomes the probability for the entire project okay so it will be 0.3 it will be 0.3 even though reasoning was not asked in the question i will give you the reasoning in the writing also if you look at the institute answer printed below there is no explanation they have only written 0.3 but write down the explanation also write down the explanation also if the cash flows are perfectly dependent if cash flows are perfectly dependent then low cash flow in the first year then low cash flow in the first year will mean a low cash flow in every year will mean a low cash flow in every year therefore therefore probability of worst case npv therefore probability of worst case npv is is the probability of getting is the probability of getting rupees 20000 cash flow in year 1 is the probability of getting rupees 1 lakh cash flow make it 1 lakh rupees 1 lakh cash flow in year 1 is the probability of getting rupees 1 lakh cash flow in year 1 so if you get 1 lakh in first year you are going to get 1 lakh in all the years and therefore just search for this probability which is 0.3 if cash flows are dependent over time if you get low cash flow in one year you will get low cash flow in all the remaining years now write down please independent over time independent over time means second year cash flow is independent of first year cash flow for example in first year if i get 0.3 
then second year I have three possibilities I can get 0 0.3 0 0.5 0 0.2 if I get 0 0.3 in the second year then again in the third year I have three possibilities if I get 0 0.3 in the third year I will have three possibilities in the fourth year and same thing here also so 0 0.3 into 0 0.3 into 0 0.3 into 0 0.3 into 0 0.3 that is what is the probability you will get 1 lakh 1 lakh 1 lakh 1 lakh in all the five years and these are independent so I have to apply joint probability and I need to multiply 0 0.3 into 0 0.3 five times so write down the answer please write down the answer please and this is the explanation we have given the diagram to explain 0 0.3 0 0.3 0 0.3 0 0.3 0 0.3 but other possibilities also exist so this is you have to multiply what is the probability of getting 1 lakh in year 1 and 1 lakh in year 2 and 1 lakh in year 3 which means you have to come apply joint probability write down 0 0.00243 0 0.00243 write down the explanation explanation is not required for the exam explanation is not required for the exam but you have to write the explanation so that in future when you are revising it you can uh, understand write each year revenue stream each year revenue stream carries an independent probability carries an independent probability if cash flows are independent if cash flows are independent the cash flow in each year the cash flow in each year can be low high or average can be low high or average the probability of getting all low cash flows will be the probability of getting all low cash flows will be cumulative probability of worst scenarios will be cumulative probability of worst scenarios will be cumulative probability of worst scenarios that is why we have to multiply by all the probabilities because cash flows are independent over time so that was the answer of question number roman 3 of this question do you have any query till now do you have any query till now yes please do you have any query okay if you have no query come to the fourth question compute standard deviation and coefficient of variation assuming that there are only three streams of cash flow which are represented by each column of the table with the given probabilities so write down calculation of standard deviation calculation of standard deviation you are given a probability distribution table you have to find standard deviation three columns we will draw first column NPV second column probability third column X minus X bar square into probability X minus X bar square into probability is equal to X minus the x bar means expected NPV what is x bar here x bar this is expected NPV already calculated square into probability ok and there are three possible NPVs please write there are three possible NPVs 8480 48060 92180 92180 with following probabilities 
with following probabilities 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.2. Now what you do on your calculator, first you type minus 8480 minus 39922 into equal to into 0 0.3. So you will get the answer like this, something very big number, 70 crore 28 lakh 26,081.20. Try the next one, type on your calculator 48,060 minus 39,922 into equal to into 0.5 equal to 3 crore 90 lakh 55,122. Try the next one. You can transfer it to memory plus first so that you don't have to take total separately. 90 to 180 minus 39,922 into equal to into 0.2. So that is equal to 54 crore. 61,79,712.8 memory plus. If you have transferred all the three numbers to memory plus, memory recall, memory recall, this is the total. Oh my god, 128 crore 80 lakh 60,916. Do not round off, your square root can be different. Do not round off. Otherwise, the square root you have to take for standard deviation, the answer can change. Is it right? So, please write down below standard deviation equal to standard deviation equal to under root 128 crore 80 lakh 60,916. Anybody wants to reply? What is the standard deviation? Please reply. What is the standard deviation? Please reply. So that is approximately 35,890. That is approximately 35,890. Thirty-five thousand eight ninety standard deviation. Now write down coefficient of variation. Coefficient of variation will be equal to what is the formula for coefficient of variation? Yes, Divya. What is the formula for coefficient of variation? Coefficient of variation is standard deviation upon expected NPV. Standard deviation upon expected NPV. What is the answer now? Standard deviation is 35890 standard deviation is 35890 and expected and pv is 39922 so what is the answer please answer please is the answer point 90 is the answer point 90 okay This is my second answer, coefficient of variation. Third answer, coefficient of variation of X limited on its average project, which is in the range of 0.95 to 1.20, you can write to 1.20. If the coefficient of variation is found to be less than the average, 100 basis points are deducted from the company's cost of capital. So our coefficient of variation is less than the average. So cost of capital will reduce. Write down risk adjusted cost of capital. Risk adjusted risk adjustment out of cost of capital of X limited. Risk adjusted out of cost of capital of X limited. Write a note first, 
as coefficient of variation is less than 0.95 as coefficient of variation is less than 0.95 cost of capital will reduce by 100 basis point cost of capital will reduce by 100 basis point that is 1% that is 1% Hence RADR, RADR means risk adjusted discount rate. Hence RADR is equal to 10 minus 1, 9%. Now write down calculation of NPV. Calculation of NPV with 9% discount rate. Calculation of NPV with 9% discount rate. Draw a table with four columns, year, expected, net cash flow, PV at 9% and PV, year 0, year 0, 4 lakh rupees present value 4 lakh year 1 to 5 what will be my expected net cash flow there are three possible cash flow 1 lakh with 0.3 probability plus 1 lakh 10,000 into 0.5 probability plus 1 lakh 20,000 into 0.2 probability so calculate and give me expected net cash flow Expected net cash flow is one lakh nine thousand. Expected net cash flow is one lakh nine thousand. PV factor at nine percent. Come on, PV factor at nine percent. PV factor at nine percent, three point eight nine zero. Please check four twenty four. 010 present value 424010 then 5 year 5 expected salvage value expected salvage value can be 20000 with 0.3 probability plus 50000 with 0.5 probability 60000 into 0.2 probability and that is equal to 43,000 write the factor Point six five zero. Point six five zero. multiply multiply please 43,000 into 0 0.650 27950 27950 Take the total The total comes to 51960 Check the total and confirm Only say yes it is right 51960 Check the total and confirm Whether your expected NPV is 51960 is it 51960? Write a note whether project should be accepted or not. That was the question. That was the question. So write advice. Advice write down project should be accepted. Advice write down project should be accepted. Project should be accepted because NPV is positive. Project should be accepted because NPV is positive. Okay. That was a very important question. Number 21. Did you like it? Those who liked it will say yes. Now we will come to question number 22. XY Limited has under its consideration a project with an initial investment of rupees 1 lakh 
थ्री प्रोबेबल कैश फ्लो सीनारियोज विद देयर प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ ऑकरेंस आर एस्टिमेटेड बिलो सो यू कैन गेट एनुअल कैश फ्लो ऑफ ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड और थर्टी थाउजेंड और फोर्टी थाउजेंड विद प्रोबेबिलिटी पॉइंट वन पॉइंट सेवन पॉइंट टू प्रोजेक्ट लाइफ इज फाइव ईयर एन एस्टिमेटेड डिजायर्ड रेट ऑफ रिटर्न इज ट्वेंटी परसेंट दिस टाइम द एस्टिमेटेड टर्मिनल वैल्यू फॉर द प्रोजेक्ट एसेट अंडर द थ्री प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑल्टरनेटिव रिस्पेक्टिवली आर जीरो ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड एंड थर्टी थाउजेंड सो दिस इज लाइक प्रीवियस क्वेश्चन ओनली दीज आर द थ्री पॉसिबिलिटीज दिस इज एनुअल कैश इन फ्लोज दिज आर रिस्पेक्टिव सेल्वेज वैल्यू फाइंड आउट द प्रोबेबल एन पी वी सेम प्रॉब्लम फाइंड आउट द वर्स केस एन पी वी एंड बेस्ट केस एन पी वी एंड स्टेट द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ ऑकरेंस ऑफ वर्स केस इफ कैश फ्लोज आर परफेक्टली पॉजिटिवली को रिलेटेड ओवर टाइम एंड सेकेंड इंडिपेंडेंट ओवर टाइम राइट कैलकुलेट स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन एंड कोफिशियंट ऑफ वेरिएशन सो वील डू दिस प्रैक्टिस वन मोर टाइम एक्चुअली इट कुड बी गिवेन एज होमवर्क ऑल्सो बट डोंट वरी आई विल ट्राई इट वन मोर टाइम फॉर योर प्रैक्टिस बिकॉज आई थिंक दिस क्वेश्चन इज इम्पॉर्टेंट सो राइट डाउन मिस्टर राकेश भाटिया यू ऑल्सो राइट डाउन कैलकुलेशन ऑफ एन पी वी कैलकुलेशन ऑफ एन पी वी सेम फॉर्मेट विल ड्रॉ अगेन ईयर पर्टिक्युलर्स डिस्काउंटिंग फैक्टर at 20% then we have three possibilities probability equal to 0.1 cash flow discounted cash flow probability equal to 0.7 cash flow discounted cash flow probability equal to 0.3 cash flow discounted cash flow column number 1 2 3 4 5 Five is three into four. Column number six. Seven equal to three into six. Eight. Column number nine is equal to three into eight. Nine is equal to three into eight. Write down year zero. Year zero initial investment. year 0 initial investment in this question it is 1 lakh write down 1 lakh that will not change 1 lakh is constant then write down annual cash flow annual cash flow would be first you compute the annuity factor 5 year 20% annuity factor 2.9906, 2.9906. Cash flow would be twenty thousand. Multiply. Five nine eight one two. Cash flow can be thirty thousand. Multiply with NVT factor. Eight nine seven one eight. Eight nine seven one eight. Probability point two. Cash flow forty thousand. Into two point nine nine zero six. One lakh nineteen thousand six twenty four. Salvage value will be received in year five. Fifth year factor at twenty percent. Fifth year factor with twenty percent. Point four zero one nine. Point four zero one nine. Present value will be zero in the first scenario. Then twenty thousand in second scenario with point four zero one nine factor eight zero three eight very good next thirty thousand thirty thousand into point four zero one nine one two zero five seven one two zero five seven NPV, NPV, 
कैन यू टेल मी एन पी वी इन फर्स्ट केस एन पी वी इन द फर्स्ट केस एनी बडी प्लीज रिप्लाई कमॉन रिप्लाई फर्स्ट फोर जीरो वन डबल एट नेक्स्ट वन नेक्स्ट वन कमॉन एट जीरो थ्री एट सॉरी नेगेटिव डबल टू डबल फोर नेगेटिव डबल टू डबल फोर इज इट राइट लास्ट वन कम ऑन लास्ट वन कम ऑन लास्ट वन आंसर लास्ट वन थ्री वन सिक्स एट वन थ्री वन सिक्स एट वन पॉजिटिव this is my these are my three npvs the benefit of this table is that you will be able to answer best case npv and you will be able to answer worst case npv also you will be able to answer best case and worst case npv also you will be able to answer best case and worst case npv also so that is why i have decided this format okay write down below step 2 calculation of expected npv calculation of expected npv calculation of expected npv draw this table with three columns draw this table with three columns npv probability expected npv column number 1 2 3 3 third column is 1 into 2 third column is 1 into 2 then these are the three npvs computed above copy npv from previous table 40188 double 2 double 4 negative 31681 up to this you have written then probability would be 0.1 0.7 multiply memory plus function also you will use 40188 into 0.1408.8 memory plus 2244 into 0.7 equal to memory plus 1570.8 31681 into 0.2 equal to memory plus 6336.2 memory recall you will get the total memory recall expected npv is 746.6 746.6 Seven four six point six. Write down step number three. Step number three. The question is, what is the worst NPV and what is best NPV? Write down worst case NPV equal to worst case NPV equal to minus four zero one eight eight minus four zero one eight eight. Best case NPV equal to. Which is the highest one? Three one six eight one. Best case NPV can be three one six eight one. So you can get in the worst scenario this NPV. In the best scenario, you can get this NPV. Okay. The lowest one is the worst case NPV. out of the three and the highest one is best case but there is a probability also so that is why they have asked you the next question calculate the probability of occurrence of worst case npv this npv if cash flows are perfectly positively correlated over time or cash flows are independent over time so if cash flows are perfectly correlated over time which means if you get lowest cash flow 20000 in year 1 you will get 20 20 20 20000 in all the year 
all the years you will get 20,000, 20,000 negative in all the years you will get 20,000 negative in all the three years ok so if I have to draw the diagram for you for the in correlated perfectly correlated in year 1 we have three possibilities 20,000 30,000 and 40,000 but if you get 20,000 in year 1 then you will get 20,000 only in year 2 20,000 in year 3 20 in year 4 20 in year 5 then only 20, 20, 20, 20 will continue only 20 so whatever is the probability of this 20,000 because the probability of future 20,000 becomes 1 you will not get any other cash flow except 20,000 in the 2nd, 3rd and 4th, 5th year so write down probability of worst case NPV 3 columns we will draw first column nature second column probability third column reasoning third column reasoning nature write down perfectly dependent over time perfectly dependent over time under that write down probability is 0.1 probability is 0.1 because if they are perfectly correlated over time then whatever cash flow you will get in the first year you will get the same cash flow in the remaining years reason write down reason write down if cash flows are perfectly dependent if cash flows are perfectly dependent if cash flows are perfectly dependent then low cash flow in the first year low cash flow in the first year low cash flow in the first year will mean a low cash inflow in every year will mean a low cash flow in every year will mean low cash flow in every year will mean low cash flow in every year therefore probability of getting therefore probability of getting probability of getting worst NPV probability of getting worst NPV is getting worst NPV is getting is the probability of getting is the probability of getting is the probability of getting 20,000 cash flow in year 1 is the probability of getting 20,000 cash flow in year 1 ok Now write down independent over time. Independent over time. Independent over time. Under that right, you have to multiply by all the 5 year probability. 0 0.1 into 0.1 into 0.1 into 0.1 into 0.1. Into 0 .1. Because what will happen in second year is independent of what will happen in the first year so it is like this it is like this in year 1 we can get 0.1 then in year 2 we can get 0.1 we can get other also in year 3 we can get 0.1 in year 4 we can get 0.1 and year 5 we can get 0.1 
सो वट इज द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ गेटिंग पॉइंट वन पॉइंट वन पॉइंट वन पॉइंट वन इन ऑल द इयर्स इन दैट केस वी हैव टू अप्लाई जॉइंट प्रोबेबिलिटी विच स्ट्रीम कैरीज एन इंडिपेंडेंट प्रोबेबिलिटी इफ कैश फ्लोज आर इंडिपेंडेंट इफ कैश फ्लोज आर इंडिपेंडेंट If cash flows are independent, the cash flow in each year can be low, high, or average. Cash flow in each year can be low, high, or average. The probability of the probability of getting all low cash flows will be. the probability of getting all low cash flows will be cumulative probability of worst scenarios will be cumulative probability of worst scenarios will be cumulative probability of worst scenarios is it right is this right anybody please reply is this right and now the next question is calculation of standard deviation and coefficient of variation please write down 16 crore 75 lakh 64148 next one memory plus transfer it to memory plus transfer it to memory plus next one minus 2244 minus 746.6 into equal to into 0.7 equal to memory plus equal to memory plus 62 lakh 60000582 next one 31682 Minus seven forty six point six into equal to into point two. Huge number. Memory plus nineteen crore thirteen lakh eighty seven thousand four twenty one. Memory plus then memory recall. Memory recall. Total is. Thirty-six crore, fifty-two lakh, twelve thousand, one fifty. Standard deviation under root. Standard deviation under root. This number, and check the answer. If it is right, please confirm. Check if it is right. One nine one one zero point fifty two. Is it right? One nine one one zero point fifty two. Is it right? Okay. Now write down coefficient of variation. Coefficient of variation. Coefficient of variation write down is equal to standard deviation upon expected NPV. Standard deviation upon expected NPV standard deviation upon expected NPV standard deviation upon expected npv write down 19110 19110.52 divided by 746.6 divided by 746.6 so the answer is 
25.59 the answer is 25.59 the answer is 25.59 is it right 25.59 is the answer right 25.59 the answer for this question was 25.59 so this answer is over one homework write down same question two times i have solved it for you so now you can do homework question number 23 Question twenty three homework. Okay, keep two pages blank for homework. Two pages blank. Two pages you will keep blank. Yes, Divya, do you have any query? Question number twenty three is homework. Same question. Now please come to question number twenty four. Please come to question number twenty four. again write down very important very important question number 24 question is from study material question was asked in november 2009 exam also for 10 marks is it right question number 24 New Projects Limited is evaluating three projects. New Project Limited is evaluating three projects. P one, P two, P three. Following information is available in respect of these projects. So there are three projects. Cost is given. inflow in year 1 2 3 4 is given for project 1 inflow is same 6 lakh rupees for project 2 project 3 inflows are changing and risk index is given beta beta is different why beta is given why beta is given yes please reply why beta is given beta is given so that you can compute risk adjusted discount rate okay minimum required rate of return of the firm is 15% risk free rate is 10% risk free rate is 10% find out the risk adjusted discount rate for this projects and which project is the best so we will use beta risk free rate and this is like market required rate of return this 15% we will treat it as like market return and therefore using this three we can find out the radr by applying the principle of capm could we start go by applying the principle of radr is it right and then after that we'll compute npv after computing npv we will answer which project is best based on highest npv based on highest npv we will decide which project is best is it right so are you ready for this question are you ready write down step 1 step 1 calculation of risk adjusted discount rate calculation of radr under that write down under that right radr can be found by radr can be found out by 
आर ए डी आर कैन बी फाउंड आउट बाई यूजिंग द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ सी ए पी एम यूजिंग द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ सी ए पी एम एज फॉलोज यूजिंग द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ सी ए पी एम एज फॉलोज सो आई नीड टू फाइंड आउट रिक्वायर्ड रिटर्न एज पर सी ए पी एम फर्स्ट कॉलम राइट रिस्क फ्री रेट सेकेंड कॉलम राइट रिक्वायर्ड रिटर्न थर्ड कॉलम राइट रिस्क इंडेक्स थर्ड कॉलम रिस्क इंडेक्स फोर्थ कॉलम आर ए डी आर आर ए डी आर विल बी इक्वल टू आर एफ प्लस रिस्क इंडेक्स इन टू के माइनस एफ के माइनस आर एफ ओके सो लेट अस सॉल्व फर्स्ट वन रिस्क फ्री रेट टेन परसेंट रिक्वायर्ड रिटर्न फिफ्टीन परसेंट लेट अस कॉल इट के लेट अस कॉल इट के रिस्क इंडेक्स रिस्क इंडेक्स वन पॉइंट एट प्लीज सॉल्व टेन into 1.8 10 into 1.8 into 15 minus 10 higher the risk higher the required return higher the risk higher the required return that is the topic called risk adjusted discount rate next one you will try come on student try next one i'll wait for your answer in second case please tell me what is radr second case what is radr what is radr second case is it 15% is it 15% is it 15% now try the next one try the next one very good try the next one third one try the third one third one answer is yes bhatia is right divya is right third one 13% third answer is 13% very good can we go to our main answer i have to find npv of the three projects i have to find npv of the three projects and i am going to use different discount rate for the three projects i am going to use different discount rate for the three projects for first project we'll use 19% for second project 15% for third project 13% because the risk is lowest okay so dear student please write year 0 and first heading write down npv of project 1 you are you are writing in notebook are you writing in notebook year 0 for project 1 investment is 15 lakh annual cash flow 6 lakh calculate the npv for yourself calculate npv yourself calculate npv on your own calculate npv on your own what is the answer 15 lakh ,00 
फिफ्टीन एटी थ्री फोर हंड्रेड टोटल एन पी वी टोटल एन पी वी एट्टी थ्री फोर हंड्रेड एन पी वी एट्टी थ्री फोर हंड्रेड स्टेप थ्री एन पी वी ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट टू एन पी वी ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट टू एन पी वी ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट टू अगेन विल ड्रॉ द टेबल वेरी गुड दिव्या एन पी वी ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट टू ईयर पर्टिकुलर कैश फ्लो डिस्काउंटिंग फैक्टर एट फिफ्टीन परसेंट डिस्काउंटेड कैश फ्लो ईयर जीरो इन्वेस्टमेंट रिक्वायर्ड इलेवन लैख ईयर वन एनुअल कैश फ्लो सिक्स लैख टू फोर लैख थ्री फाइव लैख फोर टू लैख यूज फैक्टर नाउ फिफ्टीन परसेंट वन डिवाइड बाई वन पॉइंट वन फाइव इक्वल टू पॉइंट एट सेवन जीरो इक्वल टू अगेन पॉइंट सेवन फाइव सिक्स इक्वल टू पॉइंट सिक्स फाइव एट पॉइंट फाइव सेवन टू ना प्लीज मल्टीप्लाई एंड गिव मी द टोटल प्लीज मल्टीप्लाई एंड गिव मी द टोटल कमॉन मल्टीप्लाई कैश फ्लो एंड डिस्काउंटिंग फैक्टर एंड टोटल Yes, you have to answer. Then only we can proceed further. Anybody who got the answer? NPV of project two. NPV of project two. NPV comes to one lakh sixty seven eight hundred. One lakh sixty seven eight hundred. Very good. Approximately you are right. Because I have used three digits, you can use four digits, five digits. You can do directly also. So this will change slightly. Don't worry. One sixty seven eight hundred or around one lakh seventy thousand something is okay. otherwise check the answer yourself once again if the difference is very high please check the answer yourself again we'll go to now step number 4 npv of project 3 draw the same table this time discounting factor will be 13% please solve please solve everybody please try Try to solve thirteen percent factor. Year one zero one one divided by one point one three point eight eight five. Press equal to. Write the factors. Write the factors. You can do directly in the last column also. Okay, no problem. Answer must be correct. Come on, come on, student. check the answer now check the answer now anybody total waiting for your answer waiting for your answer please tell me the total of last column total of the last column So this is approximately two lakh thirteen thousand eight sixty. Approximately two lakh thirteen thousand eight sixty. 
Now compare the three NPVs and select that NPV which is highest. Which NPV is highest? Which NPV is highest? Project 3 NPV is highest. Conclusion write down. Conclusion write down. Project 3 has highest NPV. Project 3 has highest NPV. So it should be accepted by the firm. So it should be accepted by the firm. So it should be accepted by the firm. Higher NPV. maximizes the wealth of shareholders higher NPV maximizes the wealth of the shareholders that was my question number 24 for you Question number 25, homework. Question number 25, homework. A very easy question. A very easy question, you can do it. Question number 25, homework. I have given you the answer in the booklet. Do it. If you have a doubt, you will ask me. Question number 25, goes for homework. Now we will solve question number 26. Question number 26 now. X Limited presently operates in a cement industry with a debt equity ratio of 2 is to 1. Very different problem. This question you will not find in the institute publication. But you have to know it. But you have to know it. So question number 26, write down very different question, very important question. X Limited presently operates in a cement industry with a debt equity ratio of 2 is to 1. It consists of debt and equity, cost of debt and equity are 13 and 17 percent respectively. It is subject to 30 percent tax rate. It feels that growth rate in cement company is going to be low or moderate it therefore decides to strategically diversified into new emerging biotechnology sector very good <clears throat> the project cash flow from the long term fund point of view are shown below year zero outflow Year 1, 2, 3, 4 cash inflow. The amount of rupees 170 crore will be financed by debt equity ratio in the ratio of 3 is to 1. Debt would be by way of a 4 year term loan from ICICI bank at an interest rate of 16% per annum. To understand the risk of equity in biotech business, that means to find cost of equity, two proxy firms, Bharat Biotech and Granular Biotech Limited have been identified. The details are given below, name of the company, debt equity ratio, tax rate and their equity beta. Bharat Biotech Limited debt equity ratio 2.5 tax rate 35 equity beta 2.2 granular 432 1.9 so these two firms are representative of the industry these two firms are representative of the industry 
based on similarity of the asset it is considered to assign 70% weight to B B means Bharat Biotech and 30% weight to G G means uh, Granular Biotech Limited then RF is 8% RF means risk free rate make it RF risk free rate risk free rate this is make it RF is 8% market risk premium means RM minus RF RM minus RF is 7% find out the NPV of this biotech business so what I need to do <clears throat> I need to find WACC for that I need cost of debt cost of equity but to calculate the cost of equity I need to find out KO of the industry I need to find out the KO of the industry or to need um, overall beta you can say because this will depend on RF plus beta of equity into RM minus RF but to get beta of equity of this company for this business I will require overall beta of the industry there are two representative firms using their equity beta tax rate debt equity ratio I will find out beta of overall beta based on these two firm after getting that will multiply by the weights given in the problem so that will give me overall beta of the industry using overall beta of the industry we will find equity beta after finding equity beta cost of equity cost of date WACC and the WACC will be applied to find out the NPV of biotech business which this company is starting this question is a mixture of two chapters this question is a mixture of advanced capital budgeting plus portfolio okay from portfolio management chapter we will learn how to find unlevered beta and I will use unlevered beta to find levered beta and then we can compute cost of equity and overall cost of capital very very important question if suddenly it is asked in the exam you should not be caught surprised okay so I request you to concentrate and write the answer in detail in the notebook so first I need to use the logic of overall beta learned from portfolio chapter write down please step 1 <clears throat> calculation of overall beta or unlevered beta calculation of overall beta or unlevered beta under that three columns company calculation overall beta company calculation and overall beta <coughs> company right Bharat Biotech calculation right formula overall beta formula is beta levered levered beta upon 1 plus debt by equity into 1 minus tax rate 
do you remember this formula do you remember this formula <clears throat> say yes or no write below write below 2.2 that is your equity beta in the last column divided by 1 plus debt equity ratio is 2.5 into 1 minus tax rate 0.35 <clears throat> can you please solve please solve this part and answer solve this part and answer is it 0.84 yes please confirm is it 0.84 is it 0.84 bhatia is it 0.84 okay now write granular biotech here the data is 1.9 upon 1 plus debt equity ratio is 4 into 1 minus 0 0.32 very important question you are solving you will not find in uh, institute publication but they will ask you they will ask you that time don't get surprised practice now more practice now is more useful for exam is the answer 0 0.51 is the answer 0.51 so these are the overall beta based on these two companies as per the question give you will give a weightage of 0.70 and 0.30 to these two number so that will get weighted over a average overall beta please write down please write down weighted average overall beta weighted average overall beta will be the overall beta of these two companies multiply by the weights 0 0.84 into 0 0.7 plus 0 0.51 into 0 0.3 yes reply please reply please everybody this is a new type of question please reply please reply point seven four one point seven four one this is overall beta of the industry on an average using it we can find now the beta of equity of this business which X limited is going to start so step number three Calculation of equity beta of X limited. Calculation of equity beta of X limited. Under that, write the formula. Beta unlevered. Beta unlevered into 1 plus d by e into 1 minus t d by e into 1 minus t d by e into 1 minus t what is the debt equity ratio of this business debt equity ratio of this business is how much 3 is to 1 so you will write Unlevered beta 0.741. This is from step 2. 1 plus debt equity ratio 3 is given. This is given. Debt equity ratio. And 0.3 is the tax rate. 0.3 is the tax rate. Solve. Please solve. Solve and give me the answer. Answer please 
is the answer 2.30 yes or no only reply yes or no 2.30 is it right okay now we can compute cost of equity as per CAPM cost of equity as per CAPM cost of equity as per CAPM formula RF plus beta of equity into RM minus RF so you can round off in two, two digits you have got 2.294 make it 2.30 it's okay <coughs> 2.294 is also okay now answer please what is cost of equity come on cost of equity is 24.1 percent approximately is it 24.1 percent approximately yes very good next point cost of debt next point cost of debt as per CAPM no cost of debt is normal formula I into 1 minus T interest net of tax interest net of tax interest rate 16 percent interest rate taken from ICICI bank at 16 percent tax rate to this company is 30 percent so what is the answer please check is it right <coughs> is it right 11.2 percent is it right 11.2 percent now write down step number six step number six weighted average cost of capital weighted average cost of capital very good weighted average cost of capital what is the weight of debt and equity tell me if it is three is to one debt equity ratio what will be weight of debt and weight of equity anybody answer three is to one means how much weight assigned to debt total is 4 so weight of debt will be 3 by 4 weight of equity will be 1 by 4 <clears throat> so write down formula for weighted average cost of capital is KD into WD plus K into WE the debt equity ratio of this project is 3 is to 1 3 by 4 into 11.2 very good plus 1 by 4 into 24.1 1 by 4 into 24.1 please solve please solve answer answer please so are you getting 14.425% 14.425% 14.425% this will be used as a discount rate for evaluation of new project write down step 7 step 7 calculation of NPV calculation of NPV NPV very good Divya calculation of NPV year cash flow PV factor or directly PV no need to write factor at 14.425 percent at 14.425 percent year 0 1 2 3 4 given in the question year 0 170 is given year 1 50 260 340 460 all these are given compute the present value how do you do directly you will type 50 divide by 1.14425 press equal to 
memory plus equal to memory plus then here 60 divided by 1.14425 press equal to 2 times memory plus you will get 45.83 do the same way 40 divided by 1.14425 press equal to equal to equal to three times 26.7 last one try yourself last one try yourself can you please try and give me the answer of last column total Anybody please reply NPV. I'll wait for you. All of you must reply NPV. NPV. NPV is equal to 18.77. 18 18.77 is right. Negative very good answer very good answer you got it right write the note project is not viable because NPV is negative because NPV is negative project is not viable because NPV is negative that was a very good question from reference material source of this question right reference book but institute will pick this question and give you in the exam one more question today 27 number question number 27 are you ready question 27 one more question where we have a combination of capital budgeting and portfolio very very good question very very important question it can be a part of portfolio management chapter or it can be a part of advanced capital budgeting chapter so let us start excellent limited is a frozen food packaging company and is looking to diversify its activities in electronics business now now they want to enter into electronic business the project it is considering has a return of 18 percent an excellent limited is trying to decide whether the project should be accepted or not to help it decide it is going to use CAPM. The company has to find a proxy beta. Beta of similar form. Proxy beta means beta of similar form for the project and has the following information on three companies in the electronics business. So this time what they have done? This time instead of one company they have found three proxy companies their names are superior limited superior limited equity beta is given debt equity ratio 50% debt 50% equity 1 is to 1 admirable this is important admirable Admirable Limited has an equity beta of 1.3 but it has just taken on a totally unrelated project accounting for 20% of the company's value that has an asset beta of 1.4 but this company Admirable Limited is not just electronic business admirable business limited is into two business one is electronic business and one is other business 
द अदर बिजनेस वेट इज ट्वेंटी परसेंट सो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक बिजनेस विल हैव अ वेट ऑफ एटी परसेंट इज इट राइट आई नीड टू फाइंड द ओवरऑल बीटा ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक बिजनेस ओनली आई नीड टू फाइंड आउट ओवरऑल बीटा ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक बिजनेस ओनली सो वट एवर ओवरऑल बीटा आई विल गेट फ्रॉम एडमिरेबल फ्रॉम दैट वी विल आइडेंटिफाई हाउ मच इज बीटा ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक बिजनेस ओनली द कंपनी इज फाइनेंस बाई फोर्टी परसेंट डेट एंड सिक्सटी परसेंट इक्विटी सो देअर डेट इक्विटी रेशो इज फोर्टी इज टू सिक्सटी एंड अदर बिजनेस हैज एन एसेट बीटा ऑफ वन पॉइंट फोर एसेट बीटा इज ओवरऑल बीटा एसेट बीटा इज इक्वल टू ओवरऑल बीटा देर इज अ थर्ड कंपनी मेरिटोरियस लिमिटेड इट्स इक्विटी बीटा इज वन पॉइंट जीरो फाइव फाइनेंस बाय डेट एंड इक्विटी थर्टी फाइव परसेंट एंड सिक्सटी फाइव परसेंट फाइनेंस बाय डेट एंड इक्विटी थर्टी फाइव परसेंट एंड सिक्सटी फाइव परसेंट सो वॉट हैव टू डू बेसिकली क्वेश्चन इज टू फाइंड प्रॉक्सी बीटा एंड यूजिंग प्रॉक्सी बीटा वी कैन फाइंड आउट द कॉस्ट ऑफ इक्विटी और द कॉस्ट ऑफ कैपिटल विच विल बी रिक्वायर्ड फॉर डिस्काउंटिंग ऑफ द कैश फ्लो बट इन दिस क्वेश्चन वी आर नॉट रिक्वायर्ड टू डिस्काउंट द कैश फ्लो आवर ड्यूटी इज ओनली टू फाइंड प्रॉक्सी बीटा आवर टास्क इज ओनली टू फाइंड प्रॉक्सी बीटा एंड फॉर दैट आई विल हैव टू यूज दिस थ्री कंपनीज इन एडमिरेबल लिमिटेड आई हैव टू फर्दर आइडेंटिफाई द बीटा ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक बिजनेस at present admirable limited is made up of two businesses okay so let us first find overall beta i will use the same formula which i have used in question number 26 right step 1 write down step 1 calculation of overall beta calculation of overall beta company calculation overall beta company calculation and overall beta company write down superior company write superior look at the overall beta look at the equity beta of superior it is 1.33 i am not writing the formula formula you can copy from question 26 and debt equity ratio is 50 50 1 1 tax rate is not there enjoy tax is not there what a life it could be if there is no taxation the world will become all together a very peaceful place if there is no taxation just try that option sometime so my overall beta of superior uh, limited is 0.665 superior limited is 0.665 now try yourself admirable try yourself admirable admirable limited its overall beta for the companies its equity beta of the company is 1.30 upon 1 plus debt equity ratio 40% debt 60% equity 40 by 60 1 plus in bracket 40 by 60 come on reply admirable overall beta please reply overall beta come on overall beta after solving it you will get 0.78 check the answer is 0.78 right is 0.78 right okay next meritorious meritorious 0.78 is right very good meritorious 
1.05 डिवाइड बाय 1 प्लस इन ब्रैकेट 35 डेट 65 इक्विटी डेट इक्विटी रेशियो 35 बाय 65 यस राजू शर्मा 0.78 इज राइट यू आर एआईआर 10 वेरी गुड आई एम एआईआर 2 foundation air 4 inter air 24 final so we have common pinch same pinch tick 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 okay answer please answer please what is meritorious overall beta 0.6825 please check 0.6825 very good anu 0.6825. Answer is not over. There is a small adjustment pending. This 0.78 is the weighted average of two business. 0.78 is the weighted average of two business, electronic business and other. And their weightage is 0.8, 0.2. and the overall beta of other business is also given which is 1.4 so you have to find what is the overall beta of electronics business 0.8 into x plus 0.2 into 1.4 that is equal to 0.78 very good sharma write down now note in case of admirable in case of admirable weight of electronics business is equal to 80% weight of other business weight of other business is 20% weight of other business 20% therefore 0.78 is equal to 0.78 is equal to Point eight into beta of equity, beta of electronics. This E stands for electronics. Electronics business. You can mention and point twenty into overall beta of other business one point four. Please solve the equation. you have to find this value is the missing figure then we will take average of the overall beta of three companies anybody you got the answer beta of electronic business beta of electronic business come on reply fast subscribe to the youtube channel also so that you will be updated all of you subscribe to the youtube channel also so i got the answer from pv divya 0.625 very good amazing some of you are really dedicated student 0.625 hence average beta for electronics business hence average beta for electronics business hence average beta for electronics business this is for superior this is for admirable electronic business this is meritorious electronic business so overall beta you can in write in bracket overall beta is equal to 0.657 is equal to 0.657 is right 0.657 is right 0.657 in bracket proxy beta proxy beta this is what they will use
excellent limited will use 0.657 overall beta 0.657 overall beta of electronics business point six five seven overall beta of electronic business and find equity beta by applying by applying debt equity ratio by applying debt equity ratio used in electronics business by applying debt equity ratio in electronics business okay by applying debt equity ratio in electronics business i have given you few questions for homework question number 25 question number 23 i would sincerely request you to solve those questions for practice purpose today itself okay just follow the instruction which i am giving you for this chapter everything will get covered in the class itself and you will get confidence that you can attempt this chapter in the exam as we'll go ahead the chapter may become little more difficult but if your conceptual clarity is there you'll be able to solve it okay today we'll stop here we will continue tomorrow at the same time okay thank you very much bye